Now, I'm sure you'll agree that treating hair loss is no easy task. Many people that suffer with hair loss do consider going under surgery to help them regrow their hair. Now, I understand that surgery is not for everybody. So in this video today, we're going to show you seven non-surgical methods to help you regrow your hair. So make sure to stay tuned. So guys, before we get into the seven ways that you can restore your hair without surgery, if you're worried about your own hair loss, click the link in the description and our hair guard specialist will give you a full analysis of your hair. All you've got to do is simply click the link in the description and then upload a hair selfie. So guys, what you're going to learn about today in this video is we're going to go over the dangers of surgical hair restoration. We're going to look at some examples of non-surgical versus surgical hair replacements. And then we're going to give you the seven best non-surgical hair restoration methods. So first, we're going to have a quick look at some of the dangers of surgical hair restoration. As with any procedure which requires you to go under the knife, there's always a risk of complications and side effects. Surgical hair restoration, the most common of which is hair transplant, is no exception, meaning it's important to understand all that can go wrong before proceeding. Some of the most common side effects of hair transplantation, the most common surgical treatment method for hair loss, include edema, hemorrhage, sterile folliculitis, hair thinning, itchiness, and numbness. Another major concern is scarring. Now, aside from side effects, there are also misunderstandings surrounding the outcome of such a procedure. Hair transplants are not a cure for baldness. You will not see instant results. Ongoing medical care may be required and you may require more than ses one session, which means more out-of-pocket costs. So let's just have a quick look at non-surgical versus surgical replacements. Aside from the obvious differences between these two restoration methods, it's also important to look at the outcomes they provide and the manner in which they provide it. The main difference is that non-surgical methods typically aim to solve the issue at the source, while surgical methods aim to cover the issue. As a matter of fact, when you go the surgical route, you'll be very likely to be back within the next 10 to 15 years because of thinning and hairline recession has reoccurred. With non-surgical methods, however, you can treat the issue at the source and prevent further issues from occurring. Sometimes you can even reverse the loss that occurred. What we're going to do now is we're going to have a look at the seven best non-surgical solutions for hair loss. The first that we're going to look at are the two most common treatments, and that's minoxidil and Propecia. Now, minoxidil was first created as a treatment for ulcers in the 1950s and it was later further developed as a medication in the treatment of enlarged prostate. However, an unlikely side effect was in its treatment of hair loss. As a result, it was soon released under the brand name of Rogaine. The mechanism through which Rogaine works is still a bit of a mystery, though its main mechanism is believed to be dilation of the blood vessels. What does vasodilation have to do with hair loss? In sufferers of male pattern baldness, thinning and alopecia are caused by dihydro testosterone. As the hormone attaches to the hair follicles, it triggers an inflammatory response that eventually leads to hair miniaturization. As the follicle miniaturizes, it becomes more difficult for the blood vessels to deliver blood to the follicles. Eventually, this leads to the follicle's death. When the blood vessels dilate, however, they can deliver oxygen and vital nutrients to the follicles. In simplest terms, Rogaine doesn't stop the cause of hair fall. Instead, it works by enabling hair follicles to survive in a hospitable environment. Next, we're going to look at Propecia. The second FDA-approved medication for the treatment of androgenetic alopecia is Finasteride, first approved in 1992 under the brand name Propecia. Unlike minoxidil, Finasteride actually targets the issue, DHT. However, this can have some unpleasant effects. While DHT is the culprit for hair loss, it's still an important hormone that plays a major role in the body. As such, blocking DHT altogether can mean sexual side effects. For example, users of finasteride may experience a decreased sex drive, inability to have or maintain an erection, and low volume emissions. 
In addition, these side effects have been shown to continue even after use has ceased. Now, the next therapy we're gonna look at is low-level laser therapy. A new treatment option for hair loss sufferers, low-level laser therapy, or LLLT, has been proven to be effective for both men and women. Now, it works by stimulating anagen phase reentry intelligent phase hairs. It prolongs the duration of anagen phase, it increases hair growth in anagen phase follicles, and it prevents premature catagen phase development. While what it does is known, how it does it is still a bit of a mystery. Some researchers speculate that the therapy may act on the mitochondria directly and alter cell meta meta <laughs> metabolism. Other researchers believe it may be responsible for the opening of K plus channels. The next thing we're gonna look at is combs and helmets. While LLLT is regularly performed in the offices of hair loss specialists, you can also use this therapy at home with the help of combs and helmets. Both methods of use have had positive results and both have been shown to have very little, if any, side effects when used regularly. In 2007, the laser comb was first approved by the FDA for use in men. In 2011, the same was achieved for women. Helmets have shown similarly positive results, however, they have not yet been approved by the FDA. The next thing we're going to have a look at is micro needling. As a natural and highly effective treatment for thinning and balding, microneedling is a therapy that has been practiced for years in the treatment of scarring and wrinkles. In recent years, however, microneedling has also been applied to the scalp and its positive effects have had life-changing results for hair loss sufferers. But what exactly is microneedling? Microneedling is a therapy that involves the intentional infliction of wounds. These wounds are very small, hence the word micro, but it's what happens during the repair cycle that makes this such a popular dermatological treatment. When skin is damaged, it undergoes a cycle consisting of three stages, and they are inflammation, proliferation, and then maturation. Essentially, the inflammation that occurs during recovery triggers the proliferation of new cells. These new cells contain healthy hair follicles, enabling the growth of healthy, strong hair. You think this all sounds too good to be true? Take a look at this study which tested the effects of minoxidil versus minoxidil plus microneedling. And if you can see on the right there, that's just a visual representation of the results of the study. And as is clearly seen, the group which went through both methods outperformed the group which only used minoxidil. Does this mean you have to use minoxidil alongside microneedling for positive results? Absolutely not. However, you can combine it with more natural methods including our own minoxidil alternatives. So now we're gonna have a look at oils and extracts. While we recommend you incorporate numerous natural methods into your hair loss treatment regime, natural oils and extracts are a great place to start. Now, pumpkin seed oil is one great choice. As its name implies, pumpkin seed oil is an oil which is extracted from the seeds of the pumpkin. The oil contains valuable minerals and nutrients and it offers excellent support when applied topically or consumed internally. In addition to its mineral support, pumpkin seed oil has also been shown to promote hair growth and treat male pattern hair loss. In 2014, a study was performed which studied the effects of oral pumpkin seed oil supplementation. 76 men participated within the study and all of them suffered from mild to moderate androgenetic alopecia. One half of the 76 men received a 400 milligram capsule pumpkin seed oil each day, while the other half received a placebo. To track changes in the scalp of each participant, photos were taken and a process known as phototrichography was performed. Over the course of the 24-week study, results were tracked. These results, basically on the right, showed that pumpkin seed oil outperformed the placebo, and this means it's an effective treatment in androgenetic alopecia. The mechanism, well, it's believed that it's an inhibitory effect of 5-alpha reductase, which is the enzyme that attaches onto testosterone to create dihydrotestosterone. Another supplement that you can use is the reishi mushroom. Now, perhaps a more unlikely candidate for hair treatment than pumpkin seed oil is the reishi mushroom, and it's been used in Asia for over 2,000 years. And this unique herb, while commonly used as an antioxidant and immune booster, is also quite helpful in the fight against balding. 
We know that sensitivity to DHT is the main culprit of androgenetic alopecia, and as such, blocking 5-alpha reductase, which is the enzyme responsible for testosterone's conversion to DHT, can put a stop to hair loss without causing issues related to DHT blocking. In 2005, Reishi was tested against 18 other species of mushrooms, and not only did Reishi prove to be an effective blocker of 5-alpha reductase, blocking around 70%, it was the most effective of the studied mushrooms by far. So what does this mean for sufferers of male pattern baldness? It means that Reishi can effectively inhibit the production of DHT and this leads to less hair fall and even possible regrowth. And finally, we're gonna have a look at diet. While a proper diet can't cure all, it can help to get your body into a healthier, more natural state of being. As a result, you may experience positive changes including hair regrowth. Essentially, our bodies function best on the more basic side of the pH scale. However, the foods we eat can tip the scale either way and much of the modern diet actually brings us over onto the acidic side. This is because foods within the typical diet are highly acidic themselves, including alcohol, carbonated beverages, red meat, dairy and sugary grains. You can bring your body's pH back to basic, but it would take some dietary changes. Now the main changes that we recommend is the introduction of alkaline foods and these are foods such as broccoli, pumpkin, coconut, almonds, tofu and chia and these are all things that can just be easily added into your diet. Now you're probably wondering which method is right for you. The reality is not everyone will have the same experience with different treatment methods. Some hair loss sufferers may go the surgical route and be overjoyed with the outcome while others may reject, regret that decision. So what can you do to make the right decision? The first, you need to understand what's causing your hair loss. You know, was it a one-time event that triggered telogen effluvium or is it chronic issue? Second, you need to decide whether you want to cover the issue or treat it at the source. It may seem obvious to choose to treat it, but many choose the former option for convenience's sake. Third, you need to decide how committed you are to long-term results. There's no doubt that positive hair growth results takes time. While surgical hair treatment methods such as hair transplant and scalp reductions are popular among the hair loss community, they aren't the only methods out there. In fact, there are numerous non-surgical methods you can use with the same or even better results. Of course, at HairGuard, we recommend you go the natural route. This would mean foregoing hair transplants and medications in favor of oils, herbs, manual stimulation and dietary changes. Is it the easiest or quickest route? Definitely not, but it's the one with the best long-term results. So guys, they're the seven non-surgical methods we've got for you to restore your hair. If you are worried about your hair loss, don't forget to click the link in the description to get your hair guard analysis, and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.